It being 6.38 p.m. on May 23rd, 2023, I call this meeting of the Brockton Conservation Commission to order. This meeting is being conducted remotely in accordance with the extension of the governor's order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 38, Section 20. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the Conservation Commission utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. If you wish to comment during a public input portion of a hearing, please use the raise your hand function to be addressed at the appropriate time. For those of you joining by phone only, please press star nine to raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be posted on the city's web pages. All votes will be done by a roll call to ensure count accuracy. Please note that discussion of all agenda items shall be limited to 15 minutes each to ensure timely progress through tonight's agenda. Maybe we'll make it 10. <laughs> okay, so if each commissioner that is present could please announce that you're here with your first and last name, so that way we will determine roll call. Laura Beekler here. Peggy Curtis here. Joyce Boris here. So we, we do have quorum. Okay, item number two would be motion to accept the minutes from April 25th. Yeah, Joyce, before we move on to that point, um, I do have a, a, a thing to bring up here. So um, due to a clerical error, uh, the request for amended order of conditions at 455 Oak Street, this is the Fuller Craft Museum, will not be heard at tonight's meeting and must therefore be continued to the June 21st, uh, 2023 meeting. So 455 Oak Street was not on the original agenda, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it was on the, it was something that was brought up in the March meeting. Um, and then uh, we just didn't, didn't roll it over. It was supposed to be in on this meeting and we just kind of missed it. So we're going to uh, uh, extend that uh, with a continuance until next month. And we'll, it'll, we'll add it to that, that meeting's agenda. Okay. Fine. And this is something that um, the commission does have to uh, do do a motion and a vote uh, for the record. To continue? Yep. Okay, um, so we'll do that now as opposed to after the minutes? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, just get it okay. out of the way. Um, so if I could entertain a motion, please, to continue the 455 Oak Street um, hearing until the next meeting. I would appreciate that. I'll make a motion to continue the 455 Oak Street uh, till the next meeting, which is June 21st. What is it, 23rd? 21st. 21st. Yeah. 21st, June 21st. You got it. Summer solstice. <laughs> okay, so the motion has been made. Seconded. The motion has been made and seconded. So a roll call vote, please. Beekler, aye. Curtis, aye. Morris, aye. So the motion is passed. So that will be continued. Then 455 Oak Street will be continued to the next meeting, which is June 21st. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Joyce. Okay. Thanks. Um, the uh, next. Madam, Madam Chair, uh, yes. you'd let the record show oh. that uh, Ms. Clay is now with us. Hello, Ruby. How are you? We can't hear you. No volume. We might be that log off, log back on again. Oh, she's putting on headphones. She'll be logging back on shortly. Yeah. I'll wait for just a minute. While we're in kind of limbo, um, I was just wondering, Kyle or Elise, had you received or Road or Isaiah, had you received any other um, 
applicants requests to be continued to the next meeting? Not until oh, now. Okay. No. That's fine. Rob, is she in the participants as opposed to panelists? I've been there waiting for her. Okay. And just for clarification purposes, I see that Rode and Kyle are both listed as, as co-hosts. Does that mean that you can um, allow screen sharing and that kind of thing for other participants to, to promote them to panelists? Yes, it does. Yes, it okay. does. Yes. Good, thank you. Is there any other business that we can take care of while Ruby is waiting? Um, I, I think since we have quorum, we certainly can uh, address the minutes of the last meeting. Um, I, I don't believe that unless Peggy, I mean, um, Ruby feels as though she has some statement to make, but I, we can certainly readdress that when she comes on. Um, okay, why don't you go ahead and start? Okay, um, so the next, Item on the agenda, the first item on the agenda actually is the, the meeting minutes. Um, the only thing that I saw was there was one, um, there was one correction to be made on the minutes. Um, and it was, let me just see, uh, at page six at the very top. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it was um, 82 Aim Street. I believe there was a typographical error in that first sentence that addressed 84 Aim Street as opposed to 82. So with that change, I believe we can entertain a motion to accept the minutes. Um, commissioners, did you have a chance to check the minutes? If so, I would entertain a motion, please. I wasn't there, so I don't know if I can make a motion. I make That's a motion true. to accept the minutes uh, of the April 25th meeting. Okay, that motion is made. I'll second that motion. Roll call vote, please. Curtis, aye. Ovoris, aye. Am I supposed to be clear? I didn't think I was supposed to. But, um... I don't. I don't know that um, you would be able to because you weren't there. With that said, I'm not sure what that exactly means as far as quorum goes, um, but I would think at the very least, um, if we need to, if, if it kind of so happens that we should have had an additional person, we can always kind of make a, make right. a new motion at the next meeting. Um, mm -hmm. I'm writing, to, that, to I'm writing that down now. Yeah, that and or, that. yeah, and or if Ruby does uh, pop back in, we can just circle back to this, uh, you know, mm -hmm. easily later on. Okay. Um, yeah, yes, so I think I, that will, yeah. I, I should um, add that um, um, for new items, um, she can vote, but for items that have been carried over, um, she she cannot. So she still, she still counts towards, she still counts towards quorum, but, okay. um, you know, because you've heard testimony on other cases, um, and she has not had a chance to review that testimony under yeah. the. So minutes would not be something that she would be allowed to, uh, that she would be no. expected to vote on. Okay, right. sorry about that. Okay, if Ruby comes back on, we will address it. Otherwise, we'll go back to that in the yeah. June meeting. I'll yep. keep moving Absolutely. forward. Yep. Okay, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Um, I do notice that, um, let's see, um, the next item on the agenda is a commission matter only just for discussion about peer review procedures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, Joyce. Um, so we prepared just a, a statement kind of explaining uh, the, uh, the ongoing relationship between uh, the commission and uh, the beta group. So I'm just gonna go ahead and read that statement now. 
the Conservation Commission has engaged the beta group in an on-call contract to provide peer review services to assist the commission in reviewing applications for compliance with the Wetlands Protection Act and its regulations, as well as with the Mass DEP stormwater management standards when applicable. Upon receipt of a new application or application uh, revisions uh, and at the discretion of the conservation agent, the commission will request a scope and fee uh, from beta group for review. This scope and fee will be forwarded to the applicant for payment in accordance with, with the NGL Chapter 44, Section 53G. Please note that beta will not initiate their review until the planning department receives a, a company or blank or bank check made out to the city of Brockton. Uh, so any delays in fee payment will, will result in delayed review. Uh, thank you for, for your, uh, excuse me, thank you for your cooperation in facilitating the review of applications before the Conservation Commission. Okay, so my understanding is that is the way that everything was done when Megan Shave was here as agent for the stormwater standards. And now until Kyle is in, is really comfortable in his position and able to feel as though he's yeah, whatever. Um, that, that that beta will be doing the same thing for both um, stormwater and for um, the wetlands protection. Wetlands protection as well. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this is not like a permanent thing, but as I get up to right. speed on things, yeah. So yeah. that we'll transition out of this, but this is kind of where we are right now. Yep. Right. Okay. And so it, that means that we can open hearings. But Absolutely. without an agent, but without an agent report, so it really would be the applicant report. We'll hear from the applicant. We'll have a discussion without an agent report, if if the fee um, hasn't been paid yet, and then once the fee is paid, then it gets reviewed by Beta, and then we get an agent report. Is that more or less? It, it's essentially what's. Uh, or Rob, you can speak to it. I think he has his hands up. Rob's hand up. Yeah. Rob? I have I have something else. I'll let you finish this conversation. Okay. So okay. Um, essentially, what's going to happen is that you know a hearing will be opened. The applicant will kind of speak to the project, and uh, basically, we we won't really have a performance standards review to share. So we won't really have um, information to provide regarding performance standards for the Wetlands Protection Act and the stormwater standards. So we can still discuss and everything. We just really don't have a measure of the compliance of the project uh, with these different standards until the peer review has been completed. Commissioner, is you okay with, I mean, not that you're okay, but you understand, is that okay? Is that understandable to you? Yeah. Okay, okay fine, thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Um, number three on the agenda. I believe Rob may yeah. have a comment. Oh, okay, uh, um, I just got I just got a message from Ruby. She's having some other issues, and she will not be uh, joining us. Okay, but we we do have quorum, so yep, that's not an issue. But we will forward the um, acceptance of the meet or or acceptance of the meeting minutes to the next meeting. Then yes, yep. okay, I'll make a note of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Rob. Okay. Um, so the next matter will be for discussion only, um, would be utility notifications. Um, the first one is Eversource. They're doing some vegetation management. And I believe Kyle is gonna summarize that. I, can, uh, I think Elise is going to. Yeah, one, yeah I'll jump in on the, um, I'll, I'll end up doing the utility notifications. It's it's pretty simple uh, for the first one, Eversource. It's um, doing vegetation management on right of way six, which is kind of a, like an electrical easement. Um, and essentially what they're doing is they're gonna be doing work within bordering vegetated wetlands and the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands. Now this work is exempt under the Wetlands Protection Act provided that best management practices are employed, uh, which they are doing. And they will be using timber mats to access the area, which helps to distribute the weight of machinery so as to not compact soil underneath it. Uh, and then they'll be restoring the areas that they had to access after the fact. So it is an exempt activity. Um, it's more of just a courtesy notification and just wanted to fill you guys in on that one. Um, and I think maybe- location? I'll, Yeah. I'm sorry, do you have the location yeah. of those? 
I so think. so that is it's a right of way so it's not like a it's not like a, a roadway or anything it's like yeah. inside, it's a big electric yeah, like it is yeah um so this one is let's see if i can get an idea of where exactly in brockton it is um it's in a couple different sections it's kind of here i'll share my screen um doo -doo -doo. so this is the area in here so okay. it's, it's kind North of a side. yep yeah mm -hmm. um and I don't know, would you like me to do the next one as well? Or do you want to see if there's any questions relating to this matter? Commissioners, do you have any questions at all? I think it's uh, fine. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, the next one was the Eversource gas line replacement. Um, that is a North Layden Street and a couple other adjacent streets. And this one is also uh, an exempt activity under the Wetlands Protection Act. They are just replacing some existing natural gas lines within the buffer zone to bordering vegetated wetlands and within the riverfront area. And again, this is would be an exempt activity taking into account best management practices uh, to be employed, like usual erosion and sedimentation controls, uh, et cetera. So that again, one is also have pretty the location. Do you have the location of those? It's It's pretty... Yeah, yeah, this uh, one is kind of a, is a much yes. longer one. I will share my screen. I believe I read somewhere it was like a year long project. Yeah, so it's kind of, a, it's full extent of, so this is Layden Street in the yellow here on the roadway. Uh, and then there's some adjacent streets. So it'll definitely be something I'm sure that's done in pieces, um, you know, over time, but a pretty straightforward project within the existing roadway. Okay. Do you know who the contractor will be that will be doing those that maintenance, or does that? Um... It it might just be like uh, EverSource, like their own people, kind of internal uh -huh. people. I'm sure they have um, departments, so to speak, for that. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And and the other the only other question that I had there was a section on dewatering, and it said if they had to do some dewatering, it would be pumped into a dewatering pit. Mm -hmm. um, if they're in the neighborhood along the street side, what do they do for a dewatering pit? Do you know? It, it, there's kind of a variety of different ways you can handle dewatering. Um, essentially, what by pit, what what usually um, is meant is that they'll kind of be an area that's sectioned off, whether it might be by putting some stones around it, like bricks or something, or uh, a compost filter tube, and the dewatering water will be directed to that area specifically. So it's not necessarily like a pit they're going to dig in the ground. It's just okay. a, an area to direct that water to infiltrate. So it's just groundwater being pumped out so they can do any replacement so they can work. Do the work. And then it'll just be infiltrated, you know, uh, in an area where they have access to grass or stone or some area that, that it can be infiltrated. So it's not resource. Okay. Correct. Yeah. And commissioners, it, it looks like they have a pretty extensive like plan on what they're going to be doing for practices. So, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Okay. Um, okay, so the next item on the agenda, violation discussions. The first one for A is the Oak Street extension. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got a, a, a kind of a summary of events that I'm going to uh, read thank off you. here. So. Um, so this is for 30 Oak Street Extension, um, and I believe uh, Olga Leroy is here uh, as a panelist, so uh, we're going to invite her to comment after I get done uh, with the summary. So here we go. Uh, on March 22nd, 2023, a site visit was conducted per the request of the City of Brockton Planning Department following a receipt of a call from the owner of 30 Oak Street Extension to review the location of trees on the property and determine the possibility of removal. During this visit, apparent violations of the act and its regulations were also observed. Violations observed include debris and pea stone piles, as well as what appears to be a recently poured concrete pad for the dumpsters within buffer zone uh, to bank of Lovett Brook. Uh, this matter was discussed at the April 25th meeting of the Brockton Conservation Commission. Because the representative of the Hamilton Company was not present for commentary, the Conservation Commission requested that an additional notice be sent to the owners 
asking for their attendance at the next Conservation Commission meeting scheduled for tonight, May 23rd, 2023. On April 27th, 2023, another site visit was conducted by the Brockton Conservation Agent to determine if any remediation had begun. Upon speaking with the property manager, Olga, and maintenance, uh, the agent determined that uh, remedial work was, as outlined in the first notice of violation, was set to begin later that day. So I've not been out to the site uh, since then, but Olga is here to uh, discuss work that's been completed. Okay, thank you. Olga Lever? Hi, hello. Hi. You. Um, should I should I show my face? I'm like, sure, if you'd like to, we'd love to see your face. <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so we are working on the issue that um Kyle has spoken on. We're working on that now, um, but we need an extension because because of scheduling with our landscape, because we didn't know um about the situation or anything like that this was the first time that we have dealt with it because originally we had rats in that area so that's why we put those like we had put stones down or something like that so that was a violation which we didn't know about so that's why we asked for the conservation is to check it because we wanted to do trees but then we found out that we couldn't do that either so so we're working to restore it back to the way it was and we have a landscaper that's already, you know, in motion. He hasn't started because of scheduling, but we just needed a little bit more time. Okay. Thank you. Commission, I'm, this, this is not an enforcement order. Um, I think it was really wonderful that the, that the company came forward to ask about the trees in the first place. And, and yeah, this is kind of an aside piece, but um, appreciative, really appreciative of the fact that you're continuing to follow the Wetlands Protection Act and, and willing to work with us. So that's great. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we would have asked first if we would have knew about that, but yeah. it, we just yeah. found out when we, you know, when Kyle had came out and then looked at everything and said that. So. Yeah. How long an extension do you think you would require? Just probably to the end of the end of next month. That's it. Because they, they gave us a couple of more weeks. I just got notification today because I was I kept asking them when can they work on it because it's our original, it's our landscapers and sure. they're in the middle of doing properties and stuff like that. So yes. they they said um, a couple of more weeks. This is when all the weeds it's, and everything else are coming forward, right? Right. Yeah, <laughs> so, I figured, yeah. so I figured yeah. the end of the month would be all set. Would June 21st be okay? Would you be able to report back to us by the next meeting? Yes. Commissioners, do you think that's okay? Just to, yeah. Okay. I don't think we need a vote or anything. If you can get back to us by June twenty first meeting, that would be wonderful. Okay, I definitely will. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye bye, everyone. Have a good night. Bye bye. Thank you. So the next violation discussion is twenty six Allen Street. Yeah, uh, and I've got a summary for that one as well. So um, on April 28th, 2023, a site visit was conducted per the request of the City of Brockton Building Department following inspection for multiple building and health code violations at the site. During the visit, uh, apparent violations of the Massachusetts State Wetlands Protection Act were observed. Violations observed include miscellaneous trash, uh, brush piles, a sofa, television, and refrigerator within the buffer zone uh, to Bank of Salisbury Brook. As, as well as likely within the 25-foot uh, the um, floodplain uh, and riverfront area. A notice of violation was sent via certified mail, uh, and we did receive a green slip back um, and the uh, asking the, the, the owner or representative to uh, attend this meeting tonight. And I think that is know, all. Do you know if someone is present from that particular, um, from 29 Allen Street? attendees here. I'm sorry, who is that? Oh, I'm looking at the attendees list here. I don't see anyone here. If anyone is here to speak to 26 Allen Street, if you could raise your hand, please. What was the date in April that you went, Kyle? Uh, the, the 28th. 28th. Yep. So it's been less than a month. Mm -hmm. I don't see anyone raising their hand. No, I don't either. Um, Kyle, do you feel that an enforcement order should be initiated at this point? 
You know, I'm not sure. I, I think that this is a fairly easy, uh, you know, uh, easy fix. yeah, easy fix here. Just you have to got to clean up and, and kind of clean up that area. Uh, you know, there was no construction done, um, no pavement added. So I can I can follow up and just kind of do a site visit and see if, if any work's been done. And then we can, I guess, always issue another notice of violation asking them to come to next month's meeting. And do you know who the owner is? Uh, yeah, I have the I have the name. Uh, it's Paul. Uh, this is a let's see. I had it pulled up here. Um, Sarophilus or something similar to that. I, I don't have it pulled uh -huh. up right in front of me, but I can I can I can reach out again and um, and, and see if they can you know come to next month's meeting. It would be great. Uh, email visit. Can I uh, make a suggestion? Um, from his last name, it seemed like he was Greek. Um, does he speak English? Um, yes. Can we kind of like issue the letter maybe in another language. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll uh, I didn't actually side. speak with the owner. Um, I know that uh, members of the building department did, so I will I will follow up with oh. them. That's a great point. Um, we'll 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 confirm that that there is no language barrier. Thank you, Peggy, and um, okay. and then we'll maybe just postpone this until next month and follow All up. All right. Okay, that's great. And then if there is no action by next month, we can take action at that point with enforcement. Sure. Okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Uh, speaking of enforcement, the next item on the agenda. For commission matters it, are enforcement orders. Um, the first one would be at Otis Street. Yeah, um, so I've got a summary and then I've got some pictures that I can share as well for this one. That would one. be great, thank you. Um, so on, on April 19th, 2023, the building department acting upon complaint from a neighbor conducted an inspection at 19 Otis Street and observed unauthorized construction activities. The conservation agent was notified by the building department and subsequently completed a site inspection at the above mentioned property. The agent observed that a retaining wall and a perugula uh, were being constructed abutting Salisbury Brook, which also appeared to have crossed the property boundary onto the city owned parcel. A review of aerial, aerial photography suggests that the work uh, may have additionally been completed within the bank of Salisbury Brook and bordering lands subject to flooding. Uh, so I issued an enforcement order on April 27th Via, the, via certified mail, and I did receive a green slip. So let me. Do you have the date of the green card or green slip? Uh, I don't on hand, uh, okay. but I, we did receive that. I can get that for you, Joyce. Okay, that's fine. All right, let me uh, pull this up here and I will share my screen. All right, can you all see this? Oh yes, this is riverfront property. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so you can see here the the this uh, like four by four beam. Uh, this is where the the, the original uh, Perugula structure uh, was 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 built. Was right upon uh, this con kind of concrete pad. I've got some aerial photography that uh, we took today. So this is a this is as of this morning, uh, and you can see that the uh, the concrete structure there in the back has some. Uh, some holes in it. They, they, it yeah, says something hard. about, I'm sorry, there's something that says use our new video editor. Does anyone else see that oh, within the screen? Let me just, yeah, thank you. Because I'm not, right. I'm not, if you could use your cursor to show us where you're. Oh, sure, absolutely. So, okay. so up here, this, this is the, okay, so, so this blue fence is the, uh, the property line. That's the property um, boundary. Yeah, I believe so. And so they had originally taken the, their old fence down and this structure here was actually on this pad back here that they, they put down. You can see that there is some, uh, some some concrete they've broken. This is where the original supports for the structure were. They were right here. Okay. Um, as you can see in this photo, they were right on the 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 the, the bare, you know the very end of this uh, this pavement. Mm -hmm. um, so here's just another shot, um, and this is shows you a, a really good shot of the, of the the property line is basically right here where this fence is. So this whole parcel back here where this concrete is, and then this open ground. I'm not sure if this is a garden or what this is back here, but this is all. Uh, on the city on parcel back here. Okay. Um, and, so, and it's right on the 25 foot, oh, well, right on the riverbank? Yeah, so you can see this is the, the this is the, the brook here. Um, and you can see uh, where we are right up on, uh, you know, about as close yeah. as you can go on the on the low water level that we've got here. Um, so I've got some other uh, photos too. I guess that's not gonna work. Um, the other one are PDFs. So I think that's my issue. Um, I, I've got some that, that show the uh, 
kind of uh, aerial satellite images and the property line. And I don't know if that's really uh, relevant. You can see it pretty well here with this shot where the property yeah. line uh, is really right where this fence is. So yeah. all again, the structure used to be here. They've, they've moved that back. Um, so that's kind of a, a summary of, of where we are here. Any questions before I, I stop sharing? The I have none. Uh, it, no. Okay. Oops, sorry. Is Kyle? The, yes. We have someone in the attendees with their hand up. I was, I was just going to ask now if, if we did have an attendee present. I am going to allow them to talk to make sure that to, if they're associated with this application. It's a different name. Andre, is this a Hi. property that you're associated with? Um, I'm, I'm Andre, but he's Rezende. He doesn't speak English. So oh, he's using my Zoom. Zoom. The, the, he, he's using my Zoom to um, join the meeting. Okay, and this is about, uh, what's the address, Kyle? 19, 19, 19 Older Street. Street? Yes, that's correct. All right. Where, His name is um, Jusino Rezende. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. So, um, Ms. Sandry, does, so he does, he does, does the person you're representing have? No, I'm a family member. Okay. And did he receive the enforcement order? Does he understand everything that's um, in the enforcement order? Yeah, he, he does understand, but he just, he, um, the prop, he put back the, the fence where his property line is. So he's just wondering what's the next step? Like, what does he have to do? Does he have to break, go back and break it? Or who does he have to consult with? Um, Elise or Kyle? Yeah, um, I, can, I can speak to that a little bit. Um, essentially, the, the, all the work that was done to kind of make that patio area is something that um, even if a permit had been requested through conservation, it's not something that would have been permitted um, yeah, yeah. beyond yeah. the fact that it's on, on the city land. Um, with that said, essentially what needs to happen is that to comply with the enforcement order, everything's gonna have to be removed. However, before it's removed, um, we're gonna have to, he's gonna have to file a notice of intent to kind of permit the uh removal of of this uh, of these items so it is something that requires uh a full it's a, it's a permit it is a butter notification a legal notification like a legal ad as well as having um plans put together to document kind of where the resource areas are or were where the bank of the of the stream or of the brook was um so that we can restore the area um to pre-existing conditions or ideally even even better um, but that's kind of the, the basics of it. With that said, it might be, and you know, it's up to the, the commission as well, but it, it might be something that um, we could, maybe with your assistance as well, um, touch base either via email or something to kind of uh, have it written down or, or get, get some, um, maybe some guidance on, on the exact steps, if that would be helpful. Yeah, that would be great. Um... If one, you guys can provide your email, we will email you and see what the next process is, the next step to get it done. And he said he is really sorry about all this. He didn't know what's gonna cause him all this trouble. Yeah. yeah. Ms. Andre, it's just so close to the river and a river is con considered a, like a protected area. And so- Yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, would it be possible, Kyle, would you be able to go visit do a site yeah, I certainly can. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna put the uh, the conservation email in the in the chat that everyone should be able to see here. So if you just want to email me, uh, my name is Kyle. You don't have to address it to me. Uh, just just send it to this email, and then maybe we can set something up. I can come out there, uh, and we can have a discussion about the next steps uh, and how to file an NOI. So I I put my okay. conservation at cobma.us, and it should be in the chat. You should be able to see it there. Miss Andre, do you see that? No, I don't see the email yet. Okay, you have to go into chat in the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, I am in chat, but it says um, my chat is disabled. I only see oh. Rob May. Uh-oh. 
I see Rob May asking, is this your property? That's all I see in the chat. Um, hang on just a second. I have a way of dealing with that. Um, I think Kyle's is only to hosts and panelists. Maybe it was only sent to hosts and panelists. No, so I, oh, yes, I had, it was. Thank you. Not to participate. I'm making her a panelist so she can see the chat. Okay. My apologies. Would you be able to be there, Ms. Andre, when um, when Kyle visits? And Kyle, you're going to have to um, resubmit that email address. Yeah, I think I sent it to everyone this time. Ms. Andre, are you still there? She's muted. She's muted. Yes, oh, yes I'm here. I see the email. I mean, the yeah, okay. conversation at cobma.us. Yeah, conservation. Conservation. Yeah. conservation. Wonderful. So a date could be a step. You could set up a date and, and go. Yeah, I'm going to email him with a date that I'm available and he could come by and then we'll go from there. Yeah, great. that sounds great. Thank you. Thank Perfect. you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so All much right. for your help. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Bye. Uh, the next enforcement order would be 803 Crescent Street. We need an update. Yeah, I got a quick update for that. Um, as you may recall, uh, during our last meeting, uh, Mr. Silva uh, phoned in that we were having connection issues. Uh, it was really, he was breaking up. It was, it was hard to, to, to communicate effectively with him. Uh, so we decided to uh, all go out and do kind of a site visit with him. So Elise, Joyce and I uh, all went out um, on May 3rd uh, to discuss the issued enforcement order with Mr. Uh, Silva uh, and uh, to discuss remediation possibilities. Um, so we had a good conversation with him. He's very uh, amenable to, to working with us. Um, and then he followed up with me on May 9th um, and requested guidance on his next steps, next steps required to comply with the enforcement order. Uh, so I worked with Elise and wrote down uh, kind of a step-by-step -step kind of instructions of, of what he needs to do next. So we uh, gave him that guide. And um, so he's taking this, he's not here tonight. Um, he's taking like this month to kind of get uh, someone hired to, to do the uh, delineation and come up with a plan uh, to, to, to do some remediation work on the, the kind of the bordering land uh, subject by the brook that, that's right by uh, his property there. So I'm going to follow up with him uh, before the next meeting, and I'm hoping that he'll have something uh, to present to us in June. And commissioners, it was a really interesting case because um, he actually had purchased the property in January. So he actually didn't have the work done, but he's responsible for remediation as a result. So it's, it's yeah, it was an, it was an interesting, interesting case. Yeah. Any questions at all or comments? Um, the next enforcement order would be 82 Ames Street. I didn't see an actual copy of the enforcement order. I don't know if it was uploaded later. So this is actually, we, th this is a part of the problem that Joyce, you and I were talking about with the agenda being kind of chopped off. So this is actually, this is on the agenda that's posted on the city website, but it didn't make it on the photocopy um, that's posted to the Google Drive. So um, it's, it's, you know, it's on the, the one that's posted on the city website, but so it, it, we'll try to be more cognizant of making sure it doesn't get chopped off. Uh, but this was on uh, the agenda. So, um, and this is also kind of an update. Um, I've got some pictures of the site too that I'll show you after the fact here, but um, this is kind of a longstanding uh, uh, site that we've been dealing with for uh, multiple years. So um, let's see, I'll just go ahead and read you my summary. Uh, on April 28th, 2023, a site visit was conducted following a phone call to the conservation agent concerning ongoing groundwork uh, on the site of 82 Ames Street. Uh, this site has been issued multiple enforcement orders uh, over the years uh, for doing basically the same type of work um, that they've done in the past. So I guess I'm gonna go ahead and share a screen now. I've got some more written down here, uh, but I'm just gonna show you kind of over time what's been, what's been done here. So, um, all right. So this screen, this picture here, 
Oops. Let's see. Hmm. All right. Let's see how I get this up there. Okay. So um, this is the picture that I took this year. Um, I was on the roadway here. I wanted to get that in the picture, so I was not on the, the property there. But um, here, uh, this kind of kind of grown over area. You, we'll see a better shot of this in a moment, but this is there's a little uh, ditch that kind of runs through here and it goes underneath the culvert uh, underneath the road coming towards us. So you can see that they, they've done some groundwork over here on the, on the left side and then also they've got some uh, work that they did over here. This is all one big parcel, um, but the, it is bisected by this uh, by this creek here. Um, so this was uh, from April 25th of this year, 2023. Um, this shot is the same property. Again, here's the, the ditch that runs through here. And I know you might think this is the same day that I took this photo, but this was actually taken on May 18th of 2022. So uh, very similar work. This is not something that's been grown. Uh, you know, they, they, they did work basically the same type of thing last spring in 2022. Um, this photo is uh, of the same location, um, but this was taken on May 21st. 2021. So again, this is the right side, which I didn't have a great shot of before. You can see where they've kind of come in through here and they've basically cleared everything out uh, with some sort of uh, earth moving implementation. Um, I've got two more photos here. Uh, this is an aerial shot of the property in question. The property in question is here, 82 Ames Street. It's the, the creek runs basically uh, kind of right through there. Um, so you can see uh, you know, that there are trees and stuff that are kind of up here. This is in 2019. The following shot here is from 2021, um, and you can see they've, they've done a lot of work here. They've knocked down some trees, uh, and this is kind of the beginning. Um, this is the same year as this photo here. So um, this is obviously something that's been going on for multiple years uh, since at least 2021, um, and, and it was pretty undisturbed, it looks like, here in, in 2019. So this has kind of been going on for at least three years. Um, anyway, so I'm going to continue on with my with my statement. So, um, uh, so before I, I did send out a new enforcement order, um, it must have been Friday um, of this. Uh, no, I sent it out actually yesterday. Uh, the, 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 the most recent enforcement order was sent out yesterday. But before that, uh, the most recent enforcement order was sent to the property owner in May of 2022. Uh, the previous agent, uh, Megan, uh, reached out to the Brockton Law Department requesting uh, assistance uh, uh, in this matter. Um, so we were kind of waiting to hear back from law to see what steps had been taken uh, between then and now before I issued the current uh, order that I sent out yesterday, but not heard anything back from law. Um, but we decided that it was, it was prudent to get the, uh, the new enforcement order sent out. So I did send that out yesterday. So I guess that's the update. Uh, no one's here um, uh, concerning the, the most recent enforcement order because I just sent it out. They haven't received it yet. Uh, but I did just want to like make the commission aware of, of this kind of ongoing uh, violation here. Uh, does anyone have any questions with the photos before I stop sharing screen? Yes, I have a question. Yes. Um, in the, the shot of 2019, I saw a, like a retaining wall on each side of the uh, flow of water. And yeah, it is kind of it's open to the air, but um, it is mm. uh, it is kind of constructed. Right. It, on but side, it looks very um, stable. Um, in the latest pictures, it doesn't look like that retaining wall is still there, and it's. I think that looks I like think it is still there, but I believe it's just the angle that we're looking at. I didn't pull the yeah. the. I ha I do have a current photo from this year where I'm kind of looking down that channel. Um, and I believe it's still intact, uh, but this is just at a, at a different angle, um, mm. so you can't really see. And it's kind of it's overgrown eventually. here, but I believe that those, those that wall on both sides is still intact here. Okay. And, um, do you do you have a copy of the enforcement order there? Because I I think generally we're supposed to ratify enforcement orders, aren't we? Um, uh, well, we did uh, vote to issue the enforcement order. So since the commission made the vote instead of us or, or of of this of uh, the agent issuing an enforcement order on their own um you don't okay. have to yeah. ratify but okay so yeah it, so okay yeah the, the way that this worked is, is okay. i did bring this to the the meeting in april um but i we hadn't had ch a chance to, to draft it or anything I, th I think i went out to the site either the day of the meeting or the day before yeah. the meeting so okay. we discussed it last okay. month 
uh, and we, you know, you voted for me to send an enforcement order, and I did that, but just yesterday because we were waiting on law. Yeah. Okay. So have you actually, has anyone ever actually spoke to the owner, or are we just mailing these enforcement orders, or where are they being dropped off to? Um, I might be able to speak to this as far as um, this project, if I, if I remember correctly, was um, one that when the previous enforcement order was issued, I, I do believe they did come to conservation. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kyle, I believe they came to conservation and then kind of stopped coming. So um, we, we yeah, sent it I, I to the owner of record, but you know, they're aware they we have made contact, I guess, in the conservation history of the, of this project. Yeah, going through everything, I I believe they uh they did file an after the fact notice of intent. Um, but after one or two meetings, um, they just stopped. Uh, uh well, they ne they never showed up uh, to have that discussion with the conservation commission after they filed. Um, so I think the the that notice of intent was kind of ended. Um, so it's not active anymore. But that, and that was that was either twenty twenty one or. I think it was in 2021 before the most recent enforcement order. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Kyle or Elise, do you know what the what what they actually do with the buildings? I mean, I I realize that there's places there that maybe potentially could be for parking, but what are the buildings used for? Yeah, I'm not sure. My, Rob may be able to speak to that. I don't know. Um, I have no idea. No. Okay. okay. I'm just curious. Okay. So right now. Okay, it's just pretty much cleared land that's just okay. Yeah. It just, it just keeps getting cleared each year for okay. Yeah. I'm sure line. Um we have a raised hand. Um I'm gonna stop sharing the screen and um uh, I'm and not sure if Heather Turco. Heather Turco. Yeah. Sure, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna promote her to panelist and uh, see if no, maybe not. It looks like she shared something in the chat, um, just okay. uh, regarding uh, maybe since it's owned by a realty company, you can issue a warning of revoking their real estate license. So you know, I think if she's just um, sharing potential options of okay. exploration, uh, depending on, on what the property entails I guess you could say so mm -hmm. just other avenues uh we could oh so through. that particular piece of property is owned by a realty company well yeah I I think that's what she's saying yeah so that huh. I think is kind of just a, a thought for us to consider yeah she says yes um thank you Heather yeah thank you um Kyle who did you send the enforcement order to just to this the address All right, I was muted. Sorry. Um, so no, I looked up the um, the yeah. This this piece of property is owned by a company. Um, so I I, I did a, a search on the uh, Massachusetts uh, Secretary of State website where you can you can determine who uh, actually the person who's running the company. Uh, and it's it's a family of people that all have the same last name. Um, so I sent my most recent enforcement order to the same individual that that Megan had uh, corresponded with uh, previously. Okay. Okay. That's fine. And with a re with an invitation, I hope for the next for attendance. Yes, yes. So I, in, in my enforcement order, I I, I requ requested that they attend the the June meeting. So we'll see. I have another question. When they did come to the uh, conservation commission meetings, did they in, appear to uh, comply or? say that they were going to um, make corrections to the property or follow yeah, I'll have to go back and look at the minutes, but it's my understanding uh, based on reviewing just Megan's summary of events that they never actually showed up uh, to any of our conservation commission meetings. It was just that they issued uh, they, they were issued an enforcement order and then they they followed up and uh, submitted a notice of intent. but then after that, they just like never communicated with the commission again after they submitted it. And the notice of intent was, was put together uh, by uh, like an engineering firm professionally. Uh, and they submitted that. And then after that fact, um, after that was submitted, then I don't think, again, we'll have to go back and check the minutes, but I don't think they ever uh, uh, showed up to any meetings to have a discussion with the commission. 
I feel satisfied that we have done what we have needed to do as a commission and that at this point, it would need to go to uh, the law department for review. Yeah, and I think that's where they that's where the commission was in May of 2022. And so this right. was, as far as I know, referred to the law department. I did find a, a document that Megan had drafted um, that was addressed to the city solicitor referring this this exact issue to the law department. Um, but again, in that la in, in the year since then, this is a, a, almost exactly a year ago, I don't know what action the law department has taken uh, concerning this issue on enforcement on this property. Uh, so that's why uh, we didn't issue the enforcement order uh, that we, after we discussed this in April of this year, we didn't issue the enforcement enforcement order right away. I was kind of waiting to see, to see if we could figure out what action law has taken concerning this property, and we weren't able to determine uh, what action, if any, the law has taken. Uh, so that's why we issued the uh, the enforcement order just yesterday. It seems like a good move, and then and then we'll see what they have to say at the next meeting. And in the meantime, perhaps we can have some discussion with with legal to see why there's such an issue with enforcement. Sure. Yep. Yeah. That sounds good. Laura, Peggy, any questions or comments or anything? No, I was just looking in the drive and looking at the communication because it was with Pam and um, Megan and it was 2021. I do remember the address. So that's mm -hmm. why I, remember, I looked up yeah. in the drive. I, kind of, I vaguely remember the case, but I don't, I just remember like you indicated, it seems like they just dropped off. Like, I, I don't know. It's like we didn't have any persistence after a certain point. And I know there was a pandemic and everything, so I'm not sure. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we will continue on and we'll see what happens next month and, and take it from there, okay? Thank you. Okay, uh, let's see. Item six on the agenda is uh, another commission matter, which is an extension request. 132 Campanelli Industrial Drive. Yep, and I've got a, a short summary here, and I think there may be some people in the chat um, uh, concerning this project here too. So, um, so here's the summary. Uh, Elise and Kyle met with representatives from Kelly Engineering on May 16th, 2023. Uh, they are requesting an extension of condition E1 of the order of conditions relating to the completion of buffer zone restoration within one year of the issuance of the order. Uh, which was originally issued in se on September 7th of 2021. Um, so uh, obviously a year from 2021 uh, is not now. Uh, so last year, uh, the uh, Kelly Engineering uh, or, or the property owner uh, issued a similar request uh, on October 5th of 2022. And the commission voted to issue an extension uh, for that one condition that we're talking about uh, to June 7th of 2023. So we're coming up on that June 7th deadline. Um, so that's, it's about to expire the, 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 the previous extension that the commission uh, uh, granted them. So uh, to this point, no work um, as permitted under the order of conditions has commenced on the site due to changes in ownership and uh, occupancy problems or, or just no occupancy in, in these commercial lots. Um, so due to the delay in starting the interior renovation of the work uh, of, of the on-site warehouse, uh, they were not able to commence the site work earlier this spring. Uh, they have requested an additional time extension for the completion of the buffer zone work until June 7th of 2024, and they anticipate starting the buffer zone work uh, around the 1st of next month, June 1st, 2023. Do you have the, you don't happen to have the map there, do you? Uh, not handy, but it's on the drive. I'm sure we can dig it up. Did I hear you correctly when you said that there's new owners of this yeah. property? Yeah, I believe there was a, a change in ownership somewhere uh, along the line here. Yes. And they did notify uh, conservation. They did send a letter. Uh, I found it in the drive. So they've been kind of um, communicating with us um, regarding this. And they they have not started any of the work so far so it's not as though they've kind of started doing the work and then ignored the restoration um from what i can tell from what they indicated there has been no work started so they were just looking to extend that one condition within the order do you think it's reasonable to request a whole year to complete something that was you know uh, yeah. issued a year or two ago or yeah. actually two years ago 
we had um we did discuss this and um it was actually kind of um uh, myself who had advised that at this point, it, it's better to ask for additional time uh, instead of having to come back to the commission. So, you know, at that point, if a year has gone by and nothing's happened, then I think that that might be a different story. Um, but it was it was myself who had actually kind of advised that, you know, they, they ask for this one last extension on this condition um, to make sure that they don't have to come back regarding this and make sure that they have additional if we, uh, if we approve this year extension do we have some stipulations that we will be needing uh, progress reports um periodically monthly quarterly uh, yeah no I, like I know that? exactly what you mean um essentially as a part of the restoration um they we basically will have to, before they can do other work, kind of give them a sign off of, yep, all right, you've, you've started the restoration, they've shown us, they provided that information, now you can do this other work. So there is, um, I guess, a, like a fail safe in place to make sure that that work is done and done correctly before they get to continue with the rest of the permit. And the, the, the restoration itself, has that already been approved the type and scope yes. of the restoration okay yep yep it's it's simply an extension to next year this time right june of 24 yep. correct um, i i meant more specific to the what they're actually doing that um that's already been approved like if they have to put in vegetation or reseed or yes. put up, um things uh, in that yeah yeah they have um like a, as a part of what was approved uh, during this whole process for the other work that they're doing, you know, to expand the warehouse or, you know, other things that was approved under that order of conditions, this was a part of it. So the restoration plan kind of and protocol is included within those original documents that were approved under the order. It, it does look from the letter that they'll be starting early June with, and Kyle will be yeah. observing that as well as, as far as the buffer zone restoration. Correct. Yeah, they're, they're planning on starting it this year. They just wanted to give plenty of, of room um, to make sure, especially as you get into the summer, it's hot, et cetera, uh, to make sure that they, they have things in the works and things are looking okay uh, mm -hmm. before they come to us for pre-construction uh, meetings. So Campanelli Industrial. And so this would be something that the commission would um, want to make a motion and do a vote on um, for the extension. And it's it's also subject to if, if you, the commission feels comfortable with a different amount of time, that, that's up to the commission um, to consider as well. I think a year is a long time, but looking at the scope of work, um, it might need um, a year to um, restore and establish all the things that we've required of them. So I don't have a problem with giving or granting a year extension. As long as progress is being made, I don't have a problem with that. Laura? Yeah, the only thing I might suggest is that we sometimes, sometimes we've done this as like a mid-year check-in point. I know Kyle will be, you know, staying in touch with it too i just i don't know if it's that if it's something that we really need if we feel that they were going to really do it this time um yeah i don't know it's kind of sometimes we err on the side of caution historically with this commission but i i don't know it's um i wouldn't i think a mid-year not making them do a quarterly update but maybe a mid-year check-in just to let us kind of know where they're at um, yeah but starting in june perhaps maybe even november to see if yeah. everything's yeah. going according to plan does that yeah. seem reasonable I think that's good. Okay. Then I entertain a motion to grant a, a one-year extension um, um, to June 7th, 2024, with the stipulation that there will be an evaluation done in November of 2023. Um, I, I entertain that motion. Do you need me to make that motion or second it? Yes, please. Um, I'm just entertaining. I make a motion to grant the year long extension for 132 Campanelli Industrial Drive to June 7th, 2024, 
with the stipulation that there will be an evaluation in November of 2023. Second. Okay, the motion has been made and seconded. Um, roll call vote, please. Equal aye. Curtis, aye. Boris, aye. Motion's made and, okay, motion passes. Okay, thank you. It was, oh yeah. Yeah, that, that's just an extension request. So there was no need to hear from the applicant. Okay, now we actually get to a notice of intent. <laughs> okay, so we have a notice of intent for Pleasant Street, the questionable part of Pleasant Street. Um, somewhere on Pleasant Street, there's a two-family dwelling. Um, let's see. Representative is, oh, first of all, do we have a confirmation of a DEP file number and a button notification? the agents do you have those available i will defer to isaiah and road regarding um a better notification and and legal ad um or i guess kyle isaiah and road and the file number do and is I it am, file number yes I believe so yeah i believe we have the uh, the butter notification uh everything is all set i think on this property Legal notice was set as well. Okay, thank you. And let's see. Do, do, do. We do have a DEP file number, and there are no tactical comments from Mass DEP on this one. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, next would be the representative presentation, I believe, is JK Holmgren. We have someone from JK Holmgren. Mr. Ferry has his hand up. Mr. May, can you promote Mr. Ferry? Sorry, I'm muted. Okay. There we go. He should be joining any second now. There he is. Yeah. Disappeared. Oh, there you are. Hi, Mr. Ferry. How are you? I haven't seen you in quite some time. It has been a while, Madam Chair. Good to see you. Yeah. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, Commission Member Scott Farrier from Holmgren Engineering, uh, representing Cedar Point uh, LLC and Michael Heichel uh, for a piece of property on Pleasant Street just down the road from Fields Ave. Uh, Fields Ave is just newly constructed back a few months ago. Uh, this is a piece of property right next to Fields Ave. Uh, it's kind of a, a large piece of property. It's uh, zoned commercial, but really in a residential neighborhood. Uh, we came before the commission back two years ago to get a, uh, an agreement on the wetlands line. We filed an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation uh, that was approved back in June of 2021. So that is the wetlands line uh, that's shown on the plan. And if you allow me to share the screen. Yes, please. I'll attempt to do it. Mm -hmm. All right, great. All right, uh, this is the uh, Salisbury River runs uh, between Prospect and Pleasant Street. Uh, so that is our western property line is, is the threat of the Salisbury River. Uh, again, the resource area uh, was delineated, located, and ultimately approved by you folks back two years ago in June of 2021. Uh, since then, Mr. Heichel divided the property, built a new house on what is called Lot B on Fields Ave, the middle house on Fields Ave. And uh, once he got that construction done, we decided to file uh, for permission to build a two family on the lot that we have before you. Uh, it's zoned commercial, so we had to go to the Board of Appeals. Uh, that obviously took some time. We received a variance from the Board of Appeals. Uh, I believe in October or November of this past winter uh, for permission to, to build the, the property as shown before you. Uh, so that allowed us to file this notice of intent. So it's a, a two family home. Uh, we've kind of tucked it as far away from Salisbury River and the resource area as possible uh, up against the, the side, the right side and the front yard setback. And uh, just because it's Pleasant Street and obviously a busy street, we didn't want in the, the ZBA didn't want to have two separate driveways that would have to back out onto Pleasant Street. And, 
you know, coming up with the uh, unsafe condition there. So uh, to get around that, we are kind of building a, essentially a parking lot. It's small. It's enough for seven cars, uh, but we're adding a, a parking area to the side as opposed to two larger driveways uh, that would have to bump out into Pleasant Street. Uh, so that's what we have before you. The house is about half of the house is within the 100 foot buffer zone, about half of it. And most of the grading is outside the buffer zone. And certainly, as you can see, the, the parking area falls within uh, your jurisdiction and within the buffer zone. We have the limit of work shown uh, outside of the, the 25 foot buffer zone and just giving us enough room to do the construction that we need and to have a little room to grade off the property. Uh, if you have any questions, Madam Chair, Commission members, I'd be happy to answer them. So that's a two family, is a two story? It's, yeah, it's actually, it, it's it's kind of the, as opposed to a side-by-side -side duplex, if if you drive around and, and look at a lot of the new houses the, that are being built on these smaller lots, not that this is a small lot, but on the smaller lots in Brockton, the two families, instead of side-by-side, -side, they're up and down two families, uh, kind of your traditional two-family home in, a, in an old city neighborhood. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's a, a first floor unit, and then the second floor unit comes with a loft. So the second floor unit is actually the more desirable of the, mm -hmm. uh, the two units on these. But there, there's a whole bunch of them around the city. Everybody, uh, it, it's what everybody's been building the last, probably the last five years or so for a mm -hmm. multi. Okay. Commissioner Bonner, Commissioner Bonner, do you have any questions at all yet? I know I that um, I have a question. I'm sorry. Oh, right ahead, Peggy. I was slow on the uh, unmute button there. Um, <laughs> the parking lot is really right up on that uh, buffer zone. Um, are there uh, precautions put in place for runoff? You know, sometimes cars leak, you know, mm -hmm. uh, oil or uh, antifreeze, things like that. Um, what kind of um, precautions have you put in place so that it doesn't run off into the- we, um, Yeah, we, we do have a, a leaching catch basin. So a, a catch basin proposed right here in this corner, the, the parking lot would be graded uh, to drain towards this leaching catch basin to ensure that uh, none of the parking lot, uh, none of the flow from the parking lot goes towards the Salisbury River. So it, it'll all go into that catch basin and the catch basin has to be maintained uh, just as, part of routine maintenance, the catch basins are supposed to be maintained four times a year uh, under stormwater management guidelines. So as part of that maintenance, uh, that would ensure that the, the catch basin continues to, to work properly. And is that the area designated for slow snow removal also where the catch basin is? I, yeah, I, 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 well, it would be beyond the catch basin. I think realistically a snow plow would just push the snow straight back. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, yeah. away from certainly away from the river, but push it straight back uh, more behind the house. Is uh -huh. there a wall uh, surrounding the parking lot area? Nope. The, you know, that that side of the lot is relatively flat. It's uh, there was really no reason to we didn't need to bring in a whole bunch of fill into a uh, proposal retaining wall. There was no reason to do that much, uh, mm -hmm. that much construction or earth disturbance. I was wondering about that. Is there, I, I'm not sure about the topography here. Do you have um, actual topography? I see 131. Yep, there's. Uh, I, I just don't see my, the topography nope. values. Nope, I will, I will show you. I just get, to be honest with you, nervous when I start hitting buttons on these things. Uh, all right, so there's the 131 is right up against this, this flood zone. Uh, the 130, I'm sorry, the 130 is right there. And then a 131 is over in here. And the 132 is further over to the fields av uh, intersection. So it is for a lot, that's big, for a lot that's 200 feet across, there's only about a foot difference in, uh, in grade change. So we'll be picking up the grade at this side of the parking lot. We'll be picking it up so everything drains back and in, into the catch basin. I have one what question. Is, I'll go ahead, Laura. Oh, yeah, just question. So I know it's a two family house, and um, with seven, you said seven was desirable, seven spaces. 
Yeah. How was that determined? Because I didn't think, I mean, that's quite a bit of parking space yeah. for the yep. city. Nope, I understood. It's, uh, again, dealing with the Board of Appeals. The Board of Appeals uh, typically looks at bedrooms now, not mm. units. Okay. Uh, so in this case, it, there's actually seven bedrooms. The first floor has three bedrooms. Second floor has four bedrooms. Oh. You know, the assumption is, you know, the, you know, the two adults have cars and then the essentially the two kids have cars. So, uh, you know, each, each bedroom they're, they're figuring worst case, each bedroom, uh, would have a car. Okay. So best case, they'll have a couple of extra for visitors. I mean, the, you know, as far as the board of appeals and even the planning department, the, you know, the one thing they don't want is people parking on the streets. So, right. uh, you know, we they usually ask us and we usually try to give them either a, you know, an extra long driveway or, or something to this effect, just so, you know, okay. Uh -huh. Christmas morning, things like that. There's enough parking for everybody. Okay, thank you. Sure. I have another question. Oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Peggy. Um, you said that this um, property is uh, business zoned. Is that correct? It's commercial zone. A uh, commercial. Yes. Does that mean that uh, business may go into one of these properties? Or uh, nope. It was. We received a variance. Uh, a variance to, to build a, a, a two family home. If a business wanted to go in, it would then be a mixed use and it would, uh, it would invalidate the variance we received. So it, it there would be no, uh, we certainly don't intend to, but even a future owner wouldn't be able to, to run a business out of the home. It would, uh, it would void the variance that we received. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I have just a very quick question. Um, the the lot B, I realize it's outside of lot uh, the lot that you're talking about, but how many units are in lot B? That was a, a more of a conventional side by side duplex. It's a two family home. Okay, so together Cedar Point will have four. Those are four units. Four units total. Lot of, right. Yep. Okay. okay. Now my understanding is that if this has not been reviewed yet. Um, by our agents because of the, um, what is it called? I'm not even sure what it's called. Um, Elise, can you help me here? That there's a, you have, yeah, you have uh, an the, the stormwater, uh, the stormwater standards. Is that what you're referencing? The master? I thought it was both stormwater and. Yeah. yeah based, so based on yeah, the, the ahead, procedure so. that we outlined at the beginning of the meeting. Yes, that's, that's right. correct, Joyce. Um, this, this, project itself as a single family home is not or not single family but as a smaller home uh, is not subject to the stormwater standard so we would um you know look we look at it per the the Brockton stormwater ordinance uh just to make sure that that's okay um and then just you know kind of do an overview of management of stormwater just as it pertains to the wellness protection act uh, but the key thing here is review of the project for compliance with the uh, performance standards of the Wetlands Protection Act for mm -hmm. work in the different resource areas or their buffer zones. Uh, mm -hmm. And I believe we, we did provide a, or beta provided a scope and fee um, to the city that I believe was uh, shared with Mr. Faria and or representatives. Um, I, I, yeah, we never received it. We assumed, uh, you know, we assume now with, yeah. you know, when there was an agent on, we never received the uh the proposal but okay. you know, we, we assumed or it was just a, a two-family home and there was an agent on board that it wouldn't uh it wouldn't need to be sent out for uh for peer review but we certainly never received a review we were to be honest we were kind of figuring we were going to come in tonight close the hearing yeah. and receive an approval um that i know it was shared with um the city i'm not sure if maybe that's something uh we can kind of determine of where where that left off or where that might have gotten um, lost uh, that we can certainly circle back. I'd maybe defer to Kyle and or admins on this one. Um, I will say, as we had kind of spoken to in the beginning of the meeting. Yeah, I um, missed that. I apologize. I wasn't. No, no worries. Um, I, that, you, but I wasn't paying attention, so I, I kind of missed the conversation. <laughs> No worries. Um, essentially, as uh, the the new agent, as as Kyle is getting up to speed on uh, assessing things and and going through the process of assessing things for compliance with the uh, Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, kind of. I know we have an on call for the stormwater, but that is also 
being extended towards the Wetlands Protection Act uh, temporarily as um, the new agent kind of gets up to speed on the processes and procedures. So we are acting uh, on behalf of the commission to do some of these peer reviews. Uh, with that said, obviously you can't fund a peer review or, or discuss it if you haven't received it. Um, and as I, a commission, I, yeah. yeah, as a commission, yeah. I don't feel comfortable without having some of our, one or two of our, our, our agent or a consultant agent actually going out and evaluating um, the plans and making sure that everything is, Certainly, you know, usually we, we defer to what the agent has to say to, to provide us with some, um, you know, important I, I ended, I, It was just based on what we've done in the past, Madam Chair, if it was a right. smaller right. project like this, the agent would review it. If it was a larger project, uh, you know, with drainage and stormwater, then that always got uh, sent out to typically to beta for peer review. So we were just assuming right. that that same thing, but I, I totally understand, uh, you know, Mr. Holden being, uh, you know, getting up to speed with, uh, you know, with, with what's done and, and having the but opportunity to do that. We so. appreciate that very much. Good. Thank you. So, so once that scope and fee is paid to the city, then, then beta can review it and, and you and Kyle will yeah. take a look at the whole package and then you'll be able to report to us at the next meeting. Is that correct? Is that how that correct. might work? Yeah. Yeah. So step one is we'll make sure that, um, you know, Mr. Fari and, and the represent, uh, applicant, you know, get, get a hold of the, the scope and fee and we can have some discussion there. Uh, and then from there, we would do a site visit and uh, beta would provide the kind of technical review uh, regarding performance standards. Yeah, so it's performance standards for both wetlands and stormwater if stormwater is necessary. Yeah, to, to the uh, extent this, yeah. uh, necessary to review per the, oh, yeah. the Wetlands Protection Act as okay. far as- the, I just had a very quick question because I'm, I'm really not sure. I'm, I feel a little hazy about it. So the building, now prior to this, that was a, was that a green space? It was, you know, yeah, uh, essentially a wooded lot. It, it yeah. wasn't, you know, it was really, it was overgrown, to be honest with you. Man. Right, yeah. right. But so now you're going to be putting in a building, a, a tall building with seven parking spots next to it. So that therefore there's going to be more impermeable surface, right? I mean, yeah, impermeable surface. Sure. So does that, that must affect the Wetlands Protection Act or is that part of stormwater and since it's too family yeah typically uh, where it's less you know the cutoff has always been four units four units or less the stormwater management doesn't apply uh most cities and towns in brockton even before uh they started enforcing the brockton stormwater bylaw right. most right. cities and towns ask us to at least infiltrate the roof runoff which right. we've done in this case just about everybody asked you to to put right. in a, a drainage system to handle the roof runoff to kind of yeah the parking that, pieces yeah. Yeah, yeah, the parking, parking in this case, the parking's a little bit out of the ordinary, I guess, than what you would see. But to be honest with you, it's no different than if we had two, you know, a driveway on the left and a driveway on the right. The impervious area would probably be about the same as what I have on this driveway. So it's it looks bigger, but it's not that much difference. But that's uh, that's typically what we do, Madam Chair. It's just a, a system for the roof runoff. So does that have to go in front of the Brockton stormwater, whatever now, or does that under our purview? That is something, um, and actually, I, I can let you speak to that. Uh, sorry, Mr. Fari, if you'd like. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, I don't that, either. <laughs> that will be more. something that we we kind yeah, the of will assess. Thing is new, and it's kind of is yeah. I know. As I understand it, if it's a lot, there's a size cutoff. If it's a lot under ten thousand square feet, I think it doesn't have to. But then I, I think there was also a a you know, whether it was a single family or a two family or a three family. So I, I don't know. I think it's yeah. just, kind of, to be honest, it's yeah. just kind of getting up to speed, the, the whole enforcement okay. and the, you know, the making everybody comply and, and apply for these permits. So yeah. I think we're at least on the engineering end of things, we're kind of just playing it by ear and submitting yeah. things. And if somebody tells us we have to do it, then we do it. Okay, so we can find out for you, I'm sure, or you can find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joyce, that'll be a part of kind of uh, as as we go through the review. We'll we'll let you know. We'll let them know um, where that okay. stands. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. It's my much. fault for not paying attention at six thirty when you can stop. <laughs> no worries. It's it's been a while since then. It's okay. <laughs> okay, it sounds good. Uh, okay. Um, any questions at all from the commission? How about a butters? Are there any butters present that might want to speak to this issue of um, the establishment of a two-family home on Pleasant Street with 
no address. <laughs> Correct. Do you see anyone present for attendees? I see no one with their hand up, Madam Chair. Okay. Then I would perhaps suggest a motion perhaps that we continue to the next meeting. I entertain a motion, please. Sure, I make a motion to continue um, the a notice of intent uh, for Pleasant Street to a two family dwelling to the next meeting um, in June 21st, 2023. Okay, motion has been, been made and seconded. A roll call vote, please, for, uh, no, for an, a continuation to the next meeting. Speaker Aye. Curtis Aye. Boris Aye. Mr. Ferry, we'll see you next month. Thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, if I could just have one second. I also have number 10 on your agenda. You'd like uh, us to take a, take this out of order? No, certainly not. But I, I completely forgot about sending Isaiah and Rhoda continuance requests. I, I hit him oh, with an email. for the VA? out of the meeting like at, at 6.30 or so, I hit him with an email. But we're, just to give you a quick update, it, it's been continued a whole bunch of times, but we've been working back and forth with Beta and we're actually going out to the site on Friday. Uh, to dig a test pit that beta wanted. So that's kind of just holding things up. So if I could get a continuance to that June meeting as well, hopefully by then we'll uh, be all set with beta and be ready to to bring it before you folks. Commissioners, you okay yeah. with that? Yeah. Okay, entertain a motion, please, to continue uh, in 940 Belmont VA Hospital fueling station. I entertain right. that motion. I'll make a motion to continue 940 Belmont Street, the VA hospital, to the next meeting, June 21st, 2023. Second. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Speaker A. Curtis I. Boris I. We will see you in June, Mr. Ferrier. Thank you very much, Commission. Have a good night. Okay. Bye bye. And it's done. Okay, where are we? Uh -huh. Okay, we have another notice of intent. Um, 97 Ames Street. Let's see, this is a new hearing, I believe. We need to confirm the file number and about a notification. Uh, Road, Isaiah. We please. did receive the button notification. Butter notifications are done. File number. You're muted, Elise. Ah, I've been so good about it. I know. Uh, we, <laughs> we do have a DEP file number, uh, and there is no technical comments from Mass DEP. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So this would be Conoco Engineers, I believe. Uh, do we have a representative present? For 97 Aim Street, a substation for looks oh. like we do. Mr. Two Hill. Mr. Two Hill disappeared. It's Mr. Two Hill. Oh, okay. there he is. Okay. Hi. Hi. How are you, Mr. Two Hill? I'm good. How are you? I'm good fine. To see Thank you. Again. you. Uh, Mike Tuhill from Conoco Engineers and Scientists here representing Mass Electric Company. This is an MCP project. This is a cleanup at the substation at 97 Ames Street uh, under the MCP. So there is an LSP involved uh, on the project. Um, there's lead contamination in the soil within the fenced area of the substation just outside of the, the, the electrified area, but still on the substation property. And this is a proposal to remediate, uh, to remove that lead contaminated soil from that area. If I could share my screen, I can yes, show you please. a few items. So this is the, this is a substation property, which is outlined in red. Um, Trout Brook runs up to this point, and then it runs through a very long culvert. Um, it's over 200 feet in length. So that'll come into play when we talk about riverfront area. Um, the contaminated area, I don't know whether you can see my cursor, but it's it's up, up in this area here. Uh, and I'll show you that in more detail on another graphic in a second. The 
This is the uh, the FEMA map for the area. The substation is it's, it's right under the community panel number, right in the center of the screen there. Um, and as you can see, uh, the substation property, Trout Brook backwater um, floodplain encompasses most of the substation property. So this work is within the 100 year floodplain. One more, here we go. Um, this is a shot um, showing some of the topography. It's a very, very flat site. Um, this is Trout Brook down here where it runs in. Here's the head wall where it runs into the head wall. And so the culvert goes up through here and it goes pretty far up um, into further up to the north uh, west. Um, the contamination area is this area up in here. So it's it's within the electrified part of the substation and just outside the electrified part. This is the fence that separates the electrified part of the substation from the rest of the substation property. Um, on this graphic, we didn't show the floodplain because it basically encompasses everything across here. So all of this work is within bordering land subject to flooding. Um, Trout Brook does have riverfront. And because it runs through a culvert more than 200 feet in length, uh, you draw a perpendicular line across the edge of the uh, end of the culvert. And so riverfront is actually down this direction away from the work. Same thing with the buffer zone um, for the brook. Uh, the, 20, the the 100 foot buffer zone is uh, down in this direction. So we have a 25 foot riverfront area and a 100 foot buffer zone. Uh, because this is floodplain up here, it's in a resource area. So I didn't draw uh, buffer zone up in that area because it's within the resource area. Um, that's about it. So what they're going to do is they're going to dig down. Um, we've done a bunch of testing in this area over the years. Um, it's all lead contamination. It's it's not leachable lead, but they want to get it out of there. Na uh, National Grid uh, Mass Electric wants to get this out of there. Um, it's about 1,200 square feet is the total area of excavation. The total depth um, is 5 to 15 feet, uh, and it varies throughout the area. And what they do is as they excavate down, they test and, and make sure they get down below MCP standards. And then they stop the excavation at that point. They will then backfill this area. And uh, pardon me, that's my mother. She doesn't understand about night meetings. <laughs> um, I call, she called a little while ago and I said, I can't talk to you. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> So this is the excavation area, five to 15 feet in depth. Um, so the, the volume that's gonna come out varies quite a bit. It's like 270 to 670 cubic yards. So quite a big variance. And that really depends upon the testing with, with the LSP on site. But like I said, they'll then backfill this area back to existing grades. So there's no effect on bordering land subject to flooding um, either during the process or uh, following the process. It'll be at the exact same grades as it is now. Mm -hmm. Um, I can leave this up or stop sharing, however you prefer, Madam Chair. I think I'm fine. Uh, Thank Commissioner, do you want to keep it up there? Oh, okay. I can always put it back up. Okay. Thank you. When do you plan on doing the um, excavating and backfilling? Is that going to be during a... Uh, during the summer weather time okay. no they want to do it during the summer that this is this has been an ongoing they have a whole series as you can imagine electric utilities have a lot of sites like this mm -hmm. and this one is now hit the list where they're ready to do the work and so mm -hmm. they do the work during the summer thank you and where does the fill go once it's excavated it goes depending upon the lead levels it goes either to an approved um landfill under the MCP, or if it's high enough, there are actually facilities that heat treat the mm -hmm. soils to remove the lead, but it all gets taken off site and remediated. Mm -hmm. And it has to go by licensed haulers. Now, um, I believe we do not have an agent report. Is that correct? Correct. Again, uh, because of the scope and fee. Yeah. So, so Beta actually, uh, Beta has has drafted up a scope and fee, and we can get that sent out uh, to the uh, to the conservation department to send over to the applicants uh, and the representative uh, tomorrow. 
and, and we can get that shared uh, for beta to complete a performance standard review under the Wellness Protection Act. And there will be time to finish that before the next meeting. Is that correct? That you'll you'll have a an agent report. Yeah, if it's by the next if meeting? it's funded, uh, if if it's funded in a timely manner, um, then yes. Okay, Mr. Tuhill, do you think there'll be a problem with that? I will ask my client. There, yeah. there are no stormwater. There are no stormwater issues. It's yeah. basically it's, digging a hole and filling the hole back in again. Yeah, it's wetlands. Yeah, right. It's it's okay. in the floodplain. It's not in any sure. other resource area. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, I personally don't feel comfortable as as a commissioner um, evaluating this um, unless we've had an agent report from from the city of Brockton. So. If we can go forward with that and yeah, possibly I tell my to the next that. meeting, that would be wonderful. So I'd entertain a motion, please, to continue to the next meeting. I make a motion to continue 97 AIM Street substation um, excavation to the June 21st meeting. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Be clear, aye. Curtis, I. Boris, I. Mr. Tuhill, we will see you then. Thank you. Good seeing you again. See okay. you next month. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I didn't take any public comments. Mm, I sure I should have. Did anyone have any public comments to make um, regarding the substation at 97 Aim Street? If so I'm sure we could at least take the comments. Yeah, I believe we do have someone that wishes to make public comment. John? Um, I'm going to promote you to a panelist and we'll see. I didn't see a hand up. John. Well, I, I spoke to him earlier today. Um, John McMahon. Yeah. Sorry. I should have had him speak while the, while the applicant was here. I'm sorry. That was my fault. What we can also do too is, is, um, if, if we let him speak to it, um, you know, at, at the next meeting, make that um, information that was shared available to the applicant yes. representative so that they're aware. Of course. Yeah. Okay. It's John, uh, you're muted, uh, but if you want to unmute, uh, you can have five minutes to discuss your thoughts on this project. Mr. McMahon? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you very much for taking my uh, my comments here tonight. Um, can I just go back to 82 uh, Aim Street? Uh, it's right across the road from 95, 97 Aim Street. And that culvert, as he said, goes all the way up. So where you have a brook running into the culvert, that all comes down into my property at, 90, at uh, plot nine on Fletcher Street. So there's a whole series of issues all the way up Spark Street that have a direct effect on me down at Fletcher Street. My concerns is that this particular 97 Aim Street have a history of filling their property. They come in, they clear vegetation, and then they cover the cleared vegetation. And it puts my property at a lower elevation than their property. With climate change coming and with climate change being here and with increasing climate change, it's gonna have more and more adverse effect on my property. As I said, and I put a letter in today explaining my position on what should be done and what I feel about the area. I've owned the property for 30 years. I've done nothing with the property for 30 years because the property and the area around it is blighted. Brockton's changing, Brockton's moving on and blighted areas like this need to be addressed. I'm prepared to help in the addressing of the blighted area, but if they're allowed to put fill in constantly and, uh, and uh, every time they decide to go in and clear the vegetation and fill comes in with no, nobody overseeing the fill coming in. If they're taking out a ton of fill and they're putting back in a ton of fill, that doesn't affect me if the levels don't go up. But if they're coming out, they're taken out as they've done in the past, cleared the area and gone and got recycled road. 
and dumped it on the right of way. I have a right of way to the back of my property, which they have a right over. And they clear that right of way and they clean it off, they fill it. The street on Fletcher Street, which I have about 560 feet of, that gets cleared by the town, the dirt portion of it, and was filled in over the years. As a result of that, I'm at a much lower elevation than they are. And with the constant uh, flooding, we have constant flash flooding down there. And as a direct result of that, it's related to the culvert, it's related to the, um, basically the industrial uh, people down there being allowed to do things that they shouldn't be allowed to do. And as you can see, as if you go back to 82 Aim Street, you see that property, that has a direct effect on me because the culvert comes straight out. It comes right out at the, in the middle of uh, 70, uh, of 97 Aim Street, comes right in and the channel is man-made right through my property. And the river front of my property is about 365 feet. So when that flows through, it comes right onto my property. And my property, unfortunately, is the lowest end down there. So I get all the flooding. And I certainly want to get some form of use out of my property. If it's recreational or something, I want the opportunity to do that. The reality of the situation is I won't be allowed to do it if it's constantly gets floods every time they go in and they, they do repairs. I was very upset that the town allowed them to put a wall around their equipment, which is roughly 10,000 square, 10, uh, square foot of a, a, 200 and, a 275 foot length fence by 300 foot fence. All that runoff comes into my property. I'm bullseye down there. So mm -hmm. um, that's happened previous. I honestly thought that the commission would keep everybody's best interest out there. Didn't happen. So now I'm here tonight and I'll be here every night that there's an issue down there on Spark Street, that there's an issue down there on Ames Street because there are issues down there and they all end up in my yard and it ends up in flash flooding in my yard. I can't, I can't even begin to imagine how frustrating that must be for you, Mr. McMahon. Do, yeah, I'm sorry about being frustrated, but I'm always frustrated. No, 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 I don't blame I you. Talk about I don't blame you. Have, you. have you put this in into writing and sent I gave the letter today. Yeah, okay, so good. we've and, uploaded, and, we uploaded his comments in the letter uh, are on the Google Drive. So the commission good. can review that after the meeting. We'll have a chance to look at but, that. And Mr. McMahon, I know that um, when Mr. Tuhill spoke, he spoke of removing a certain amount and then putting back a certain, we're just removing a lead. So that way there isn't any lead in that soil and then replacing it with clean fill and then keeping it at grade. So- That's what they said. I understand that. That's what they yeah. said, but that's not the history. And I'm, I'm going on history, not on what they say. Okay. And the history is, is that the town give the approval and then they take out whatever they take out but they put back, they have a history of putting back more in than what they're actually taking out. How mm -hmm. are you going to monitor that? Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly can. I, okay, we take, we'll certainly take everything that you've said into account and we will um, follow up on that, I'm sure. I, I've you. dealt with it for 30 years. If you look at the, if you go down and do a, uh, on the right way that runs along the back of my property, you go down and do a soil test on that. You, you'll you find other types of soil that is not supposed to be there. Or you could come down to my right away and do tests on my right away. You'll find the, you'll find the soil. I know you don't want to do it, but you'll find it. Have you ever addressed it to the zoning department? Or uh, I've addressed really? it to a number of people over the last 30 years. Mm -hmm. I have addressed it. I have addressed it. Especially when the flood, when you're coming in and you're bringing in the, uh, the flood, uh, basically the runoff in relation to taxes on land. I spoke to the DPW about it all. They okay. told me that they're not going to put any more um, basically dirt on the on Fletcher Street down there. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's 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 been a long time going, and I've let it go because it, it's 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 the area has been blighted for years. Mm -hmm. Slowly but surely, I've every time I'm going in for thirty years ago when I came into this town, it was it was miserable. It was depressing coming in. It's slowly but surely moving up. Mm -hmm. it's in, but right now, as far as I'm concerned, enough is enough. If these big industrials want to come in, let them do them to the standard and let them be held to the standards they're supposed to be held to. Mm -hmm. yep. That's what, what I'm looking for. 
No it sounds more. reasonable. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we'll certainly um, take a look at what you've submitted and, and make sure that we follow up on that. Thank you. Okay. And I okay. will make sure you follow up to me. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Okay. McMahon. Have a lovely night. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, and I've got John's email, so uh, we'll we'll be in communication going forward. And you'll you'll post that email on uh, the, the he sent so, an email. So right? yeah, the, the the letter that he drafted is on the Google Drive now. Um, okay, I then, didn't see that earlier. Okay. Yeah, um, and then we uh, I'll I'll be in communication with him going forward via email as well. That's wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Are there any other attendees that have that would like to address this particular? site. I don't see anything. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is uh, 710 Oak Street, a car wash construction. Notice of intent. A new hearing, so we should have a final number about a notification. Isaiah, we have the about a notification. And at least we, or Kyle, do we have the file number? We um, do not have a DEP file number quite yet. Uh, doesn't mean anything per se just yet, um, but there has not been one issued at this point. Okay. We can still open the hearing and move forward, but we would not That's be fine. able to do, uh, make okay. any decisions about it. And Isaiah, do you have information on the about a notification? Or road for 710 Oak Street or Mr. May? Mr. May does not. Um, Kyle, have you seen any about a notification? It should be at the NOI if, but I didn't look through it. Um, this is Phil Henry with Civil Design Group. Uh, I could I could address that. Um, we we did send out a butter notification via certified mail, and I, I have the white slips in my possession. You do have the white slips. Okay. Yes. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Um, and I'm sure and, the file. Yeah, I was gonna say it, essentially what we need to do, um, you know, is, is just confirm that the certificates that were sent match the addresses for the butter list. That is something that we do need to confirm prior to opening the hearing. Okay. Um, um, so that is that that's um let's see. I mean I I, I have them here. Okay. <laughs> so um, I thought yeah. the whole purpose was certificate of mailings is that the post office obviously takes on the liability of sending those as opposed to like the green cards. Not necessarily. Uh, really, the difference is that with the green cards, you get a return signature back. Um, with that said, we could um Barring, you know, hearing from Isaiah and or road, um, we could open the hearing. And then if it so ends up happening that the uh, something is, is off with the abutter notifications, then we can, um, then we can, you know, address okay, that this is not in good. the future. It is 821. Okay. Yeah. What I could do so, is um, I could, yeah. and I could, I could mail the certificates. Yeah. Or a photocopy would be would be fine as well. Um, so I think with that said, maybe uh, Joyce, we can go ahead. We'll open the hearing. And if there does end up having, you know, being a concern with the about our notifications after the fact, we we can address it um, for the next meeting and or at the next meeting. Um, okay, why don't we do that? We'll certainly get the representative um, presentation. Mr. Mr. Henry, if you could give us your presentation. Um, Without the DEP file number and without the definition, you know, the specific abutter information, um, we still we still want to hear what you have to say, yeah. and and we can still open the hearing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Excellent. I'll share my screen. I believe uh, my client, the applicant, Chris Fazio, was probably also in the in the waiting room. If if um, somebody could let him in just to answer any technical or uh, operational questions, should you have this any? hand is up. Mm hmm. Kyle, can you um, admit him as a as a panelist? Uh, yes, I'm trying to. No. Thank yep. you. I think he should be in. No. 
Okay. Can everyone see the screen? Yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so what I'll do is I'll give a brief overview of the site, uh, the site layout, uh, where, where we are, um, where the wetlands are, and what we're doing for stormwater on a, on a high level, and then I'm happy to answer any, any specifics. So what you're looking at here is the overall site plan uh, with an aerial underlay, just to get everyone's frame of reference. North is page right. This is Route 24. Uh, this is Oak Street here. The subject lot is this two and a half acre parcel that is sandwiched between in front of the Walmart and behind the Cumberland Farms fueling station that fronts on Oak Street. Um, this site, as you as you can see, does not have frontage on, on Oak Street. It gets its access via an existing access easement via the Walmart driveway that has signalized access to Oak Street. Um, so what I'll do, I will, I'll zoom in. Can everybody see the site plan change? Yes, I can. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so what you're looking at here is the site plan and I, the site has been rotated such that north is facing down now, 90 degrees. Okay. Cumberland Farms is, is off the page at the bottom. Walmart is off the page up at the top and that existing access drive is off to the left here where, where my mouse is pointing. Um, so the, as you can see here, we're not utilizing the, 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 the entire site. As I mentioned, the site's two and a half acres. It's mostly of um, uh, vegetated lawn and then supplemental of the Walmart um, sp uh, spaces uh, associated with the Walmart uh, facility. The, the proposed construction or the proposed development includes, I'll zoom in here, includes the construction of a 4,500 auto wash facility that uh, you, you enter the facility, you, you enter the site via the existing, uh, the, the existing driveway uh, right here on the northerly end. Uh, there's 12 vacuum spaces immediately to your left. And then you can enter the car wash by three ways. You can enter it on, on this inside turn here and go into each one of these bays here where essentially this is a bay that where you park and the washing wand kind of goes around your car. So you don't move through this uh, section of the building. The opposite is true of, of this section of the building where you get hooked onto like sort of a, of a conveyor and get pulled through the tunnel. Um, as you can see here, each one of these driveways, each one of the exit lanes have its, has its own driveway that dumps you back onto this existing driveway. Um, so essentially, after the vacuums, it's it's one way clockwise, um, counterclockwise circulation around the building, whether you're going through the car wash or through the bypass lane. Mm -hmm. In terms of the the, the resource areas, um, when we did the Cumberland Farms project back in probably 2017 or 18, we went before this commission, and this wetland line here was approved as. At, um, included in that notice of intent. Fast forward to four years ago or about one year ago when, when this project was started, we had the same wetland scientists go back out to the site and verify that the resource um, has not changed. And as um, in, included in the notice of intent is their letter and, and re refreshed or revised wetland report indicating um, they went out back in July of 2022, uh, indicating that, that the wetland line, in their opinion, has not substantially changed. So what you see here in blue, per the local regulations, I believe uh, the buffer zones and the wetlands need to be a, a non-black color. Um, what you see here is the, is the resource area, and then the 25-foot buffer, the 50-foot buffer, and then the 100-foot buffer. Uh, to the, to the easterly side, there, there's also wetlands off locus here. Same, same exercise, uh, they verified that those wetlands have not substantially changed since uh, 2018. And then as you can see here, the 25, 50, and 100 stretches not back on site, but it does stretch within the existing driveway area. We're not substantially doing any new impervious area. There's some minor repaving in, in this driveway, as you would expect, but obviously we're just showing it for contextual purposes. Um, as you can see on, on, the, on the site plan, um, 
the the closest part of the uh, um, new asphalt area stretches to about 35 and a half feet uh, to 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 one of the wetland flags B12, uh, but most of the project is is substantially outside of the hundred. So obviously we're here before you for uh, work within the hundred foot, and then obviously any hydraulic uh, connections. Mm -hmm. I'll go to the grading plan. So what you see here, same orientation. This is the grading plan here. So all the curbing and the line work is the same. The only difference here is you don't see any of the traffic markings and, and, and the line striping. What you see here is grading and limit of work and as well as the drainage. So this, this thick dash line here is the anticipated um, or, the, or the proposed limit of work. And as you can see here, we do not get any closer than the 25 foot at the pinch point um, but obviously, as you can see, most of the limit of work stretches beyond that 25 feet into the 50 and the 100 and obviously outside the 100. Mm -hmm. um, as far as stormwater, um, as you would imagine, we are increasing the impervious area. So our stormwater system, we feel, is fairly robust given, given what we're proposing. So similar to the, uh, to the fueling station that was approved a few years ago, we were able to apply the same um, logic or, or, or approach with, with managing stormwater, and that is um, an above ground stormwater basin that's located here. And you could see this shape by the contours. So uh, water, it, so this, this basin uh, can, can accommodate and handle all the runoff from the impervious area. And you'll see catch basins that are strategically located around the site that um, are at low points that we've graded so that water gets collected into those catch basins and then piped into the basin itself. Uh, this basin we feel uh, complies with not only the state DEP regulations, but also the, the, local, the new local stormwater regulations, including pretreatment as it relates to TSS, uh, phosphorus and nitrogen re uh, removal. And we do that by there's a provision in the local stormwater ordinance that says if we, if you statically hold the one inch storm below the lowest orifice out of that um, outlet control structure of your basin, it you know you're deemed to meet 90% TSS removal and 60% nitrogen. So uh, this basin does comply with that. I, I realize that the commission is probably going to recommend uh, a review, uh, and that is certainly fine. I just wanted to give you some highlights. Of, of the stormwater approach uh, that, 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 that we encountered here. Um, so that, that's basically the general overview. I'm, I'm happy to answer any, any specifics that you may have. Um, are there specific regulations governing car washes with the use of detergents and all of that kind of thing with phosphoruses and all of that? It's, are there specific regulations that mandate uh, I don't know, certain requirements for that? Well, the, well, the car wash portion, the chemicals, the car wash cleaning chemicals, yeah. that's part of, that's part of a closed system. So that, that is, that is either going to get recycled or obviously go to the sewer. So that's not part of the stormwater portion. So the stormwater yeah. portion is all exterior. That would be runoff and that kind of thing. Madam yeah, Chair. Like rain, rainfall and, and how we're managing um, oil from parked yes. cars and, and um, sediment uh, from the first flush and so on. Yes. Um, Madam Chair, any of the drainage that occurs inside the building is treated as um, uh, sanitary waste. So okay. it needs, it'll be pre-treated and go to the sewer system. It does not go into um, the catch basin. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. But even, okay, I'm, I guess I'm just thinking of the little bits that are left on each car, but if you have hundreds of cars going through, they might be, you know, but, okay, okay. Um, it's fine. Just a formatting uh, question. I, I'm sharing my screen, but I've, I've lost my video. Is that typical? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, commissioners, any questions? I have a question. Um, has there been a traffic study done? 
Uh, I we, guess it's out of my purview, but. Um, um, yeah, that's okay. Um, to answer your question, I, and I probably should have um, mentioned this at the onset, we, um, we, received, we recently received a special permit for the use through the zoning board uh, in March. And um, we, are, we are now, as you would imagine, filing with conservation and, 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 and planning. Um, we conserve, you know, the, the conservation filing has simply beat the planning board filing. So as I understand it, the planning board filing is, is forthcoming. And um, as part of that initial process is a, is a technical review committee meeting. So um, the, any, any traffic related comments or requests or requirements uh, would come part of that process. Um, so that, that, I guess that is forthcoming, but that has not started yet. Okay, and I have another question. I see the solid dotted black line surrounding the property. Is that going to be a fence or do you have any kind of um, uh, things in place to prevent runoff um, besides the catch basin, like for snow removal and things like that? Yeah, that's a good question. Are you talking about this dash line then? Yes, yes. Yeah, so no, that 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 is an that's an invisible line. That's that oh. is the anticipated limit of work. So that's that's where uh, the construction fence will be, and and the and the wattles or the silt fence and, and and hay bales. That that's where those will be placed at the onset mm -hmm. of of the site. In terms mm -hmm. of um, the only fence would be around the. The trash enclosure for obvious reasons for aesthetic appeal but also to make sure there's no uh, trash debris that that gets blown into the wetland mm -hmm. um, as far as to answer your question about stopping stormwater this this site is is, is completely curved so there'll be a six inch reveal curved a, around um around the around the entire uh, asphalt area and as you can see some catch basins like here and here are are with are well within the pavement limits or not along the curb. So in these cases, we've graded them back into the site or into the middle of the dry aisle, whereas catch basins here and here are along the curb. But in either case, uh, either the stormwater is going to hit the curb and then ro um, run into the catch basins via the these uh, flow arrows, which kind of help the contractor tell them that this is where the water is supposed to go. Mm -hmm. um, but but to answer your question, um, we we don't believe that there'll be any um, untreated discharge into the wetlands. Now, are you connecting to the Brockton sewer system for the the dispensing of all the water that's produced in the car wash and the yeah, soap so, and all yes. that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there will be. Um, th the answer is twofold. So we haven't. Um, um, been in front of the TRC yet, but but essentially, uh, part of this th this project was is going to have a percentage of 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 reclamation. So at, at every wash, a portion of that water will get recycled back into the system, and a portion will overflow into the sewer system. So that's that's a that's an equation that obviously includes new water coming into the system. So. We're going to have that conversation with with DPW on basically the water and sewer usages, and then kind of fine tune that uh, after we have that discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just curious. Um, sometimes during the power wash process, they have like an undercarriage and a uh, wax that's applied. Is that considered a, a pollutant? Um, so does that get separated when, it, or does it all get mixed together? Um, all of that is within the building, and that is that wastewater is treated as sewage. It does not go out into the stormwater system. It goes into the sewage system, though, to be treated yes, at a treatment plant. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, and and just keep in mind that that the sewage is is also pre-treated as well. There, there's a number of processes that um, that it um, requires you know sediment to to settle 
and for oils and, and floatables to to float. So um, let me I can go to the um, let me go to the utility plan here. It should be on here. So this is a little bit outside, I guess, the conservation realm, but I'm but I'm, but I'm happy to share it. Uh, this is the utility plan here. So you do you see these these uh, exterior tanks here? Mm -hmm. So these are subsurface tanks. They are, and, and these are the reclamation tanks. And so this is the processes where um, car wash water has to flow out of the site and back into the site. I'll also mention that within the building, you'll see these like thinly light rectangular uh, rectangular shapes here, here, and, and, and here. These are, these are sediment traps that uh, when you come in, when, when the car gets washed, the the debris, the sand, the salt from the car falls into these trenches, and these trenches are cleaned on an as-needed schedule. Either they're they're weekly, they're shoveled out. The outlets are are also hooded so that floatables stay stay floating. Um, and then once water leaves these trenches, they go through a series of of, of three three tanks where it's the same process. It gets settle gets solid i mean solids get settled and oil stay stay afloat and then either water is reintroduced back into the system or it goes into a final oil water separator and then gets into the sewers so all all of the um sewage processes are, are governed by you know local and state regulations that you know just like other car washes in town that we'd have to adhere to <laughs> I think I my question was more geared. Um, I, w I was wondering about this because of any potential flooding and having anything back up um, into um, that area, I guess. Into the resources. Yeah, yeah into the resource area, correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I could tell you that, um, so the exist, so um, there, there's a, there's a actually an existing drain line that where my mouse is going from this resource area that connects to, to, to this resource area. This pipe is a 48 inch pipe. So it's a very, very large pipe, which tells me that this wetland was probably not meant to be a wetland. It was probably a low point that gathered between filling this site and, and the embankment of Route 24, that this mm -hmm. wetland over time has just formed by standing water. Um, so, but, but in any event, everything drains from right to left on the screen. So, and, 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 and it gets, the site gets, you know, fairly lower, although it's a very flat site from, from, from right to left. Also this basin should the, should say a hundred year storm occur, this basin can handle up to and including the hundred year storm for this site. And then anything above that, the, 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 um, the outlet, uh, the, um, the grate gets used and then is discharged into the system and then is discharged to the to the left of the page or to the east of the site. So there it's unlikely that water would back up from the property and and flow into into the wetland to page right. Mr. Henry, what's the depth of that infiltration basin if at the the deepest point is is four feet. So if you look here, this is a 206 contour and this is a 210 contour. Okay, I didn't see those numbers. I see them now. Yeah. So 13, 212. Yeah, I see them now. Yes, but but uh, but the water, but it's important to note that there's a difference between the embankment, which is a which is at a four to one slope, and and the and the water. So the only four feet of water is anticipated to be in, in the hundred year storm, which is of a fairly substantial storm. It's in that that's an eight-inch storm. Mm -hmm. So that will be uh, that will be vegetated most likely, right? With yes. Yeah. We yeah we anticipate this to be just like um, the other basins on the Cumberland Farm site. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, once again, we don't have an agent report. Um, I assume that that beta will be sending a scope and fee. Yes. Um, yep. 
Yeah, we do have a scope and fee uh, prepared and ready to go. So we'll we'll send that over to the conservation department to distribute to uh, Mr. Henry and, and Mr. Fazio uh, for peer review of the um, project for Massachusetts stormwater standards, the local Brockton uh, ordinance, as well as the performance standards under the Wetlands Protection Act for applicable buffer zones for the resource areas. Okay. And Isaiah is currently working on uh, double checking the uh, butter notification. Awesome. Okay. That sounds good. Great. Good. Okay. Yeah. And so I that, and I'll um I'll, I'll I I could scan these in and send them to Kyle. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. yeah Thank work. you. Thank you. That's great. Good. So I assume then that we uh, there isn't much more that we can do right now until we have right. an agent report and we have those about our notifications and DEP file numbers. So mm -hmm. um I would entertain them if perhaps um, unless anyone has anything else that they yeah Mr. Mr. Henry. Uh, yeah, I just have one more, I guess, a, a request, and this is maybe for for Bob uh, May. That if if this if this project obviously is going to go before planning board, if if is it possible to use the one peer review comment as it relates to stormwater for 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 both conservation and planning board, just to simplify and streamline the review process? Um, yes, yes, it will. Okay, thank you. Oh, and quickly, Sorry, Commission. Mr. Fazio, do you have any questions or? No, sounds good to me. Commissioners? Mr. Holden? Uh, I, yeah, I believe Isaiah was trying to say something. So Isaiah- Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't anything? see him. I no, no worries. no worries. Hi, Isaiah. I don't, how are you doing? I was just taking a look at the application. I don't believe we did receive a budget notifications for this. Um, I see the addresses, but I don't. I don't remember seeing green green. Yeah, okay. so I think thank you for the clarification. Um, uh, Mr. Henry will provide us with the certificates of mailing. And um if if there ends up being that there's some sort of um issue or discrepancy or, or something, that's something that we can address um, you know, before the next meeting, we'll get that taken care of. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I think typically it's it's on, on my end, it's like it's a chicken or the egg thing because yeah, I, I need, exactly. Because there's a we the abutter notification letter is is in the application, but usually we, we don't send it out until you guys say it's complete and we get an agenda date. So in in that abutter notification letter, I modified it after the fact when, when Kyle told me what the date was. So I, I added it to that letter and then sent it out to the uh, addresses on the on the on, on the certified abutters list. So and then typically these are done in person. I usually bring the green cards or the certificates in, in person. So um, but but I have them and, and I will scan them and send them to Kyle. All right. Yep. Great. Sounds good. Sounds good. Good. Thank you. All right. Thank okay. you. Then I believe then I would entertain a motion, please, to continue to the next meeting. Make a motion to continue 710 Oak Street to our next meeting on June 21st. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. A roll call vote, please. Beekler, aye. Curtis, aye. For a side, gentlemen, we will see you next month. Thank you. Thank Good. you. Thank you very much. Yeah. We need another car wash. <laughs> we do. <laughs> uh, VA hospital was done. Uh, now the agenda item number 11 is the enforcement order on Claremont Avenue. Um, a notice of intent and yeah, bringing that up to date. Uh, is an applicant here for that? Mr. Grady appears to be here. Yep. Hi, Mr. Grady. Hi, Mr. Grady. Hi, everybody. I think I'm on now. Mm hmm just takes a minute to connect. Um, let's see, we've uh, had several meetings on this project. Um, in the last hearing, we submitted the soil testing protocol um, a day or two before the meeting. The commission um, did not have time to review the protocol and they, yeah, and you requested that we continue the hearing um, 
till tonight so that you'd have time to review the testing protocol. There was no other uh, outstanding items uh, that we didn't address. We've addressed every question uh, during every meeting. So I think the last item here is this testing protocol and uh, mm -hmm. we're available for questions and discussion. I did review it with you. I went over it at the last hearing, but you didn't have time to dissect yeah. it and absorb yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, I've read through it. It seems, it seems fine. Um, agent report, Elise, did you want to comment? Yeah, so that essentially to, to his point um, on this, the only outstanding item was the, you know, get, getting that soil uh, fill, you know, testing protocol. And um, I've also kind of, you know, gone through it and it, it checks all the bosses, bosses, boxes uh, and addresses all of our concerns. Uh, and it does also include um, a require or not a requirement, but but a statement that they would send along a uh, result of reporting as well, I believe. And you can correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Grady, um, but that those results would be shared with the commission. Yeah. Um, awesome. Otherwise, the uh, Massachusetts, as far as Massachusetts Loan Protection Act is concerned, they have addressed all of the performance standards concerns, Mass DEP stormwater concerns. Uh, Beta has, you know, gone through that peer review, uh, and there was back and forth revisions were made. Um, so at this point, the applicant has addressed everything as far as, um, you know, the the regulations are concerned. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, do you have any comments, questions? I read through it and I didn't have anything. Okay. Peggy? Um, I don't see anything um, more that... Um, needs to be explained. I think the last meeting we were pretty thorough. Um, I did have a soil issue with uh, the rest of the site, um, yeah. but um, I guess Beta doesn't feel that, that that's necessary. Um, it's, it's outside of the conservation's jurisdiction. Right, okay. Yeah. All right. And um, then my questions have all been answered. Now on the on the soil protocol, um, did it? I didn't. Did the soil protocol specifically say that we would receive um, copies of the results of your soil testing? There, I didn't see that in the protocol. I, maybe I missed it somewhere because I there, I was thinking of perhaps making that a condition, a special condition. That could also be included as a special condition as well, just kind of as an added assurance. Um, I believe in the actual uh, protocol, there was a sentence, let's see, uh, upon receipt of the soil and analytical, da analytical? <laughs> analytical data from the laboratory, Conoco will review the data and provide a summary report of the findings of the test pit sampling program. Uh, and then it will include X, Y, Z. Um, and conclusions and recommendations. And so, you know, I, I guess it could be also read as a little bit more of a general statement to that they would, you know, provide the report, doesn't say to who, but we can clarify as yes, a special yeah, condition. Would, yeah. I would personally okay. appreciate that if we could do that for as a, a special condition that we would get copies of, specifically that we would get copies of the reports. Yeah. Definitely feasible. No. No other comments. Um, what about from the public? Any comments from the public about this particular applicant? I don't see any hands up. No hands up for. Um, okay. No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, then we need to determine whether or not to close the hearing. I entertain a motion. I make a motion to close the hearing of Claremont Ave map 181-042. Okay, the motion has been made to close the hearing. Second. I second the motion. 
Motion has been made and seconded. Uh, roll call vote. Beekler, aye. Curtis, aye. Boris, aye. So the uh, hearing has been closed. Um, so the next motion would be to issue an order of conditions. Um, with the special conditions, I believe that had been outlined in, in your last report. Did you want yeah. to just go over those very quickly? Elise? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was the um, agent revised kind of report that we provided while we were going through the you know interim, interim. process yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and adjustments. Um, but let's see, I just had it right here. Here we go. So essentially the conditions were just gen like conditions that um, Megan, uh, the prior agent had also used and I felt they were good conditions. Um, and they are also conditions that are echoed within the whole plan of this project. Um, but one is that a wetland scientist or other qualified professional will inspect restoration areas within the 100 foot buffer zone after completion of the initial plantings and seedings and at the end of the growing season for two successive growing seasons, um, which I, I believe in the actual report, it does say three in their, in their kind of project filing. Um, and within 90 days of each inspection, a report will be submitted to Barclay Conservation. Uh, second condition is that at minimum, the report follow the monitoring report following completion of the initial plantings and seeding within the restoration area shall be submitted to the commission before the issuance of a partial cer certificate of compliance or certificate of compliance. Uh, and the monitoring report shall confirm species, health of species, as well as seed mix. And lastly, that the final monitoring report uh, confirming compliance with the restoration plantings after two growing seasons including any replacement of species shall be committed, shall be submitted to the commission before the issuance of a full certificate of compliance. So kind of just echoing um, what was already planned for and brought forth in, in the uh, project proposal. In, in that and that period. final special condition would be that we would receive any soil testing results. Correct. Mr. Grady, okay with that? Yep. Okay. So I entertain a motion to uh, issue an order of conditions with those special conditions that were listed. I make a motion to issue an order of conditions with the special conditions outlined in the agent's revised report for Claremont Ave Map 181-042. Second. second. So that motion has been made and seconded. Roll call vote, please. Beekler, aye. Curtis, aye. Boris, aye. Word of conditions, yes. Thank you. Thank Great. you, Mr. Grady. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Grady. And I'm sure Thank everyone you. in the neighborhood would be very happy to see some grassy area in the... <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> It'll look good when we're done. I'm sure it will look beautiful. Thank It'll you. be like a field, a big field. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Um, okay, thanks, everyone. Thank you for Thank your time. Yep. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay, so um, rather than closing the meeting now, I believe we have to um, enter into an executive session. Um, Laura, Peggy, yep. okay with time scheduling for that for a period of time? Yep, yep. Okay, as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the Conservation Commission, we're gonna enter into an executive session. We will not return to an open session. Under exemption number three of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, so we can discuss strategy with respect to escalation of enforcement orders with documentation of repeated noncompliance. So we need a vote by roll call for the commission to enter into an executive session. Um, I'll vote. Curtis uh, here. Yeah. Oh, be clear. Here. War is here. Okay. So we now enter into executive session. <laughs>